Trading the stock market without a strategy is very similar to gambling. In fact, the definition of gambling is to play a game of chance for money, a bet. Sometimes you get lucky, but eventually you're going to play a bad hand. Look, trading isn't easy. If it was, everybody would be profitable. The stock market is subject to emotional changes, and in hindsight, everything seems 2020. So in this episode, I want to talk about paper trading and why it's so important. Alright, we'll cut the smooth jazz for now. So paper trading means that you're making simulated trades with fake money. Why would anybody do that? Well, to test out certain strategies and see if it would have worked for you or been a complete failure. Before we jump into how to actually paper trade, let's go over the pros and cons. So pro number one is obviously you can't lose any money doing this. Although going bankrupt on a virtual account would be a little bit concerning, but there's less pressure on you because you know at the end of the day, if things go south, it won't actually affect you. This brings us to pro number two. Even though it's fake money, with practice, you can develop strategies that will work for you. The third pro for beginners is that you can see how intense or indecisive the market can be. Volatility can be very scary and can drive stocks up or down very rapidly and you can see how this happens in real time using paper trading. And my final pro is that you can come back at any time. Even though I developed a strategy already, I come back to try out new ones to develop it even further. Practice makes profitable. Now let's talk about the cons. The biggest con I feel is that you might not trade realistically. It reminds me of playing poker with friends without betting money. And you always have that one friend that's always gonna go all in. If you lose, big deal. The problem is with paper trading, you can do the same exact thing. You can counter this by trading with the amount that you intend to actually invest in the stock market and also by not making plays that you normally wouldn't make. For example, don't make plays like bag holding when you normally would have intended to sell. The second con is that you might brush off losses but get really excited about wins. This one's big because people always want to talk about their wins but not their losses and that's not a really healthy habit to build. You might actually trick yourself into thinking that you're profitable and when you actually invest, you might lose money. Another big con is that if you make a lot of money on virtual trades, you might get upset because you're thinking, wow, if I invested real money there, I would have made a ton. This might make you impatient before you develop your real strategy, and you might be tempted to go into the stock market and make a big investment or a similar trade with real money. But overall, paper trading is a great tool to get your feet wet in the stock market, but you really have to trade this money like it's real money so you can keep it as accurate as possible. I'll be using the Thinkorswim platform to go for this tutorial as it's my preferred platform for all trades. I have all my charts and tools and everything in there. They also have this incredible tool called On Demand. This allows you to actually go back in time and make trades. This is really great because you don't have to wait for the stock market to open and you know paper trade alongside the market. You can go back to any point in time and trade to your heart's content. And you can trade at any hour of the day or any hour of the night. Just try not to use a time period or day where you know what's gonna to happen to the stock. Like for example, if you know that on the chart, Apple's going to 300, don't go like a couple months beforehand and buy stocks knowing it's gonna go up. You should try to choose a time period where you don't know what's gonna happen. All right, so let's actually go into the Thinkorswim platform and go over some examples. Okay, so let's go ahead and load up Thinkorswim. I know you see that toggle for paper trading. Think of that as paper trading during market hours. As I'm recording this, it's currently Saturday afternoon, so the market is obviously not open. This is where on demand comes in handy. So let's log on to the normal account, not the paper trade. On the top right, let's toggle on demand. After you toggle it, you'll see a little prompt. Go ahead and close it and let's start using this tool. This screen share video is meant to teach you how to find on demand and I'll show you an example of a buy. I'll be releasing more videos on topics like RSI, MACD, and thinkorswim lessons in the future. So make sure to subscribe. As you play around with it, you can choose a random time period from the calendar on the top right. For this video, I'm gonna show you a staged trade where I already know the outcome. The reason why is because you know how people always say, man, I wish I bought Tesla when it was $35. Well, there it is right there. So let's right click and buy. I'll buy 100 shares for 3,500. Let's pretend I don't know the future of Tesla and play it day by day. It went below the short-term SMA and also the long-term SMA, so it's not looking like a great investment at the time. Now, of course, we all know Tesla went up in the future, but during this time with uncertainty around it, investors were worried that it could plummet even further. I can't help but be curious knowing the future of Tesla, so let's just see how much profit we would have made. Wow, 75 grand, not too shabby. But don't get excited about bag holding. Let me show you an alternative example. Okay, so let's type in apron, A-P-R-N, which is Blue Apron, uh, a food and recipe delivery service. And let's go over to July 25th of 2017. You can see that since its IPO, the stock has been dropping. 
and it finally showed some signs of recovery. There's no long-term SMA line yet as it's too new, but let's say you did your due diligence and decided that now was a good point to enter. So you buy 100 shares for around, let's say 11,200. And look, normally you'd sell a validation, but let's be bag holders for this one. If we go to the current date, it's worth around $8. So essentially you would have lost over 90% of your investment. A stock may never go back up and continue to plummet. So you have to be careful that you don't end up as a bag holder too. So Thinkorswim goes back to around nearly 2010, but I want you guys to check out this ticker uh, called BVSN for back in 2000. Imagine bag holding a stock at nearly $800, which dropped to $8. What is that, like a 99% loss? Look how quickly it happened too. So bag holding isn't always a slow killer. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope this video was useful for you. If you can, please subscribe and leave a like. That'd be super appreciated. If you have any comments or questions, please be sure to drop them below and I'll see you guys in my next video. Keep on making great trades.